What is up everybody, Rapid to bring you guys a brand new reaction video. This has been a highly requested video and I'm going to get straight into it because it's a long video. But if you guys are new, hit that subscribe button help me out. Let's get to 400 subs. Anyways, I'm going to talk while the video Fit gets going. MC. Fit MC. What's going on everybody? This is Fit MC and today... This is the oldest video I've reacted to. About 2B2T. About 2B2T. The day 2B2T. Oh my gosh, I can't I never speak. Had a the day it almost died. This topic until recently. There is so much that I have to tell you. I hope you're sitting down for this because it's time to tell you about the history of 2B2T that has been kept secret from you. This video is three years by old. Myself and by three others. years old. Today, we're going to talk about the day 2B2T almost died and how the you can tell oldest video has changed. Minecraft His mic is a lot different. Actually, an anarchy server. We're going to talk about a history of backdoor what? access, lies and deceit, and the server event that almost killed 2B2T for good. When it comes to discussing the history of the server, I have not been entirely honest with you over the past two years, and I've left out some key details uh -oh. for reasons I'm going to explain later in the video. My dude's been lying to us. But let me tell you why I've decided to finally make this video. House... If you're watching this right now, I just want to say that I appreciate that you've kept 2B2T running all of these years. And I uh, hope you will not be mad and rather understand why I've brought this up. Uh -oh. The 2B2T player base, the FitMC fans, and all the players that have quit 2B2T deserve to know the truth about this place. Now, a few weeks ago, I posted this image to the 2B2T subreddit. It's a screenshot I had taken after I'd slept in a bed in order to skip the night on the server, which is a really rare occurrence. This was taken on 2B in late April of 2016, about two months before the Camping Rusher made his famous 2B2T video. Okay. The image was 100% upvoted on the subreddit, which surprised me since the subreddit hates YouTubers. But in the image, you will notice I am the only player online. That's right, the only player online on 2b2t.org. And that's because the majority of the player base had quit. Oh. That's right, that was a normal evening on 2b. I was the only player online. Most of the players had quit because of the drama that went down in 2016, and it almost killed the server. I actually do remember. I used post to watch the camping rusher. I remember when he made. It was strange that a historical two images two like this would get swept under the rug just because I had mentioned spring of 2016. This already should be a red flag. Sato posted some memes to the subreddit a few days later, and one of his images just happened to mention the back door of 2016. Meme posts are normally kept up if they have a little bit of effort put into them, and Sato definitely put the effort in, but Housemaster also deleted this post. It's clear to me that Housemaster has been actively censoring posts about this topic on the subreddit. It's clear he's trying to hide what went down in the spring of 2016, but uh. YouTube is my platform, and he can't censor me here. It's oh. time all of you knew the truth. This makes me think that something Housemaster did. Like, Housemaster's trying to cover up something that he did. That's what it makes me think right now, bro. I had to really speak this first three and a half minutes, but he's been giving some background information, and I need to hear it because this is an old video. I don't know this much about 2B2T history. I'm going to be using Sato's timeline to put these events in a chronological order. While Sato's timeline, it's not perfect, and there are some issues with it, it is the best one to use for reference. Camping Rusher? I remember that. I don't know anything before this on 2B2T. This one's a little outdated. This one only goes to 2017, and I know Sato's currently working on the current one. But anyway, with all that being said, this is when 2B was founded. This is when I became a server regular. And then this is where all this drama began, 2014. I was just a 2B2T player at that point. I was not a I, YouTuber. I want Whilst, to I want to read this real quick. The Great Server Decay. I thought it was Sato's I thought that it's not, name not was meaning YouTuber. that like the was server was like dead or something like nobody's like playing. You. I don't know. 
before the server was world famous. In July of 2014, a strange message appeared on the 2B2T website. Yeah, that's right. 2B2T, it used to have a website, and it was run by House. It was paid for by the players. It was a legitimate website. But Housemaster had left this message. It says, Housemaster has left 2B2T forever and is no longer in charge. What? The server will continue like normal, though, and will be operated by an anonymous friend. Now, this message confused a lot of us. Wow. What did he mean? An anonymous friend. Is the server going to die? What do you mean things are going to be normal? Well, there was an immediate change in quote-unquote housemaster's behavior after this message. When emailed, originally his responses were calm and they were polite. But afterwards, they were kind of rude and slightly condescending. And it's a trait still seen in his messages today. Oh, I've told everyone in responding to the mails asking about the back door I know of, which is the one that happened in late 2011. Also something to note that the headers of his messages originally were in Swedish. But after this change, they were now no longer in Swedish. That was also a little bit suspicious. Now, for the rest of 2014, nothing really unusual happened. But in April 2015, the April Fool's event was released. And it had a Middle Eastern jihad theme to it. <laughs> this footage is all I have from that April Fool's map. Some of you have probably seen this video a long time ago on my channel. My God, don't do this. Please, don't do this. Get up there. Let's get up there. What? Now, here's some screenshots from that map, and it was a really fun April Fool's event. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, it was hilarious. But, the admin was using a Jihad and a MIDI radio plugin. Jihad was a TNT plugin used to give the players TNT and other explosive devices, and MIDI radio would play songs across the whole server with note locks. These plugins were both on the player, I Tristan's GitHub page. Now his name might sound familiar if you see my previous videos. He's I think I even recognize this name, bro. There with Pyrobite. But during the April Fools event, Tristan was able to adjust the jihad command on the spot and apply the changes almost instantly, implying he had some sort of access that we didn't. Tristan was one of our base mates at Asgard too, so the fact that he had access made us feel pretty uneasy. And looking back, if you remember, when we got to the world border, the sign that was left there was from Pyrobite and I Tristan. So that just goes to show you, even as early as 2013, there were some backdoor shenanigans going on here. If you see this, it was already really suspicious. Stuff went down. Little did we know that at the time, I Tristan was part of a secret group on 2B2T called Tyranny whose main goals Tyranny. involved taking control of the server from Housemaster. The group consisted of I, Tristan, the leader of the group. They were trying to steal the Not server from Housemaster, bro? notorious griefer. Clyde, one of my old base mates and a master of social engineering. Jared, 2013, the loose cannon. And Talo, a fierce PvPer. Him and I had a fierce PvP rivalry spanning multiple years. It was already known that House was never truly a hands-off admin. He had world-edited Spawn before, and had actually befriended players such as Imps and Octopia. There were rumors that House had world-edited bases into the map for his friends, but whether that is true or not has never really been proven. House was also friends with I Tristan, a mistake that almost cost the server its life. When the server returned from the April Fool's map, something had changed. So was I Tristan's goal here to uh, just destroy the entire map? Is that what his goal was? Withers had become re-enabled after having been disabled for quite some time. They were enabled on the same day that Tyranny griefed Ormonger's Mesa base. And then, the very next day, suspiciously, Withers became disabled again. Now, oh. Not too long after this, Asgard 2 
gets griefed, sparking the third incursion. During uh. the incursion, Tristan betrayed the incursion by trying to protect Jaren. It was during this time that I was forced into one versus one PvP combat with Tristan. After going through multiple sets of Yeah, that is super sus. That the withers get enabled for the griefing of a base and then get disabled or immediately, Arthur, bro. I finally managed to kill him. This didn't make Tyranny very happy. Jared came at me, but I killed him. Taylor came after me, but he fell for my fall trap, and I killed him. The incursion had fought off Tyranny and won. For now. Dude, Fit was killing everybody, bro. It was the night before breakfast. I didn't know Fit was so good at the PvP. When the craving struck Austin and he called it a night. Toasted breakfast brios are here. Power down and sleep well. Breakfast brios actually looks good. Get one. Only at Taco Bell. Bung. Are you still with me? Good, because this is where it gets insane. And where the truth finally begins to leak. About what had been happening behind the scenes. Behind our backs. The year is now 2016. Pop Bob had not been seen on the server in a while. Players were carrying Pop on Bob. as usual, and bases like Aureus City and Space Valkyria continue to thrive. A brand new exploit had just become public the Bed Teleport Exploit, or Bed TP. Players were able to use beds to travel far distances in the nether, abusing Minecraft's respawn mechanic in the overworld. Now, how it would work is that you would sleep in a bed in the overworld, and then you would go to those exact same coordinates in the nether, which is eight times as far away. And you'd put down a bed facing the exact same direction as the first bed. You'd leave the nether, kill yourself, and you'd respawn at the bed in the nether, assuming that someone had placed a bed there at the next warp point. Hold up. How do you place a bed in the nether, bro? Doesn't that blow up? <laughs> you set up a chain of beds that would lead you out into the millions. And remember, each time you traveled, the distance multiplied by eight. So by the last jump, or, you were easily you, going over a million blocks. Or you're dying. Many players use this method to travel to the lands, know. a legendary base abandoned long ago. They wanted to see the base for themselves in person and build there with Jack the Ripper, who was very proud of his base. Jared became enraged when he learned that Jack was inviting people to the lands. So he attempted to ride the bed chain all the way to the lands. When it was discovered that Jared was coming, Jack ordered the bed chain to be broken as quickly as possible. The last bed in the chain was destroyed. And it seemed that Jared would be cut off from the lands for good. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. But then, <laughs> the unthinkable happened. Why is everybody afraid of Jared, bro? <laughs> Out of nowhere, Pop Bob logged in at the final link and reconnected it. Jared finally had a path to the lands. What? This is the first time that Pop Bob had logged on in months, and this would be his final act of treachery. <laughs> he logged out for the final time and never return to the server in any real capacity ever again. What? Now that the chain was real. <laughs> this man, this man enjoyed just to put this bed down. Dude, if Jared, I guess Jared and Pop Bob know each other. Jared must have, like, FaceTimed this dude and was like, dude, I need you to place this bed down and then you can get back off. <laughs> and then this guy never played plans, Minecraft again. He was not alone. Talo was with him. Brandishing a 32k sword given to him by Tristan. Everyone at the lands did what they could to defend, but it was no use. Talo killed everyone, and Jared began to grieve. After the lands fell, all of the members of the base were upset. Uh oh. Right after the lands got griefed, Ormonger's next base is mysteriously found by Tyranny and griefed. And once again, Withers became enabled just for the grief and then were instantly disabled. Wow. This was a major red flag. I was going to say, bro, that's suspicious. This to begin investigating Tristan's GitHub page, and while doing so, he noticed something odd. Tristan had uploaded some new files and left them public 
likely on accident. James downloaded everything he could and showed the files to a few other people, including Kane's Law. Since James and Kane's were both members of Aureus, I got to hear what was going on. But I was away from the city gathering artifacts for the soon-to-be museum, and I wasn't really too interested at the time. Upon closer inspection, Kane's realized what they had in their possession. What? They were region files of 2B2T. Not world downloads, region files, which can only be obtained by taking them directly from a server. These region? files would give numerous coordinates that were investigated immediately. There were stashes, spawn bases, and builds included. I'm... Is he meaning region by, like, southwest region or something like that? Or region, like, gaining arts back? <laughs> region files. But the very last one they invested or he's not in even meaning that. is what blew the lid off this entire thing. Keynes, Jack, and a few others ended up finding Tristan's secret base stocked with 32k weapons, 32k tools, player and mob heads, and all sorts of illegal items. What? When looking into the chests further, Keynes found something that had never been seen before on 2B2T. Barrier blocks. The only way these could even exist in survival is if an admin spawned them in directly. Was Housemaster supplying Tyranny with these items? How they, Did they yeah. have some kind of direct access Bear to the server? Box. Yellowstone Joe was able to identify the fact that the base was in newer chunks, meaning that everything there was recently made. Jack stored some of the items. Silver Crown King also had a stash and canes. Stashed some of the items as well. When Kane's Law returned to Aureus City and showed me the barrier blocks, I was floored. But also instantly was on edge. I knew things were only going to get worse from here. Once Tristan discovered that his stash had been raided, he took the members of Tyranny and did what would be their final major act on the server. Two major griefs. Long distances apart, back to back. Space Valkyria and King's Landing. Okay. A display of force to show their power. Tyranny traveled instantly to Space Valkyria in the end and griefed it. Uh -oh. Once they were done griefing it, they created an exit portal at Space Valk out of thin air. Come on! <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. They literally spawned an exit portal with illegal portal frames out of thin air and landed <laughs> safely back in the overworld where they went directly to King's Landing and griefed it. Oh my how, gosh. How do they know these locations? How was this possible? The player base uh -oh. was outraged. Normally, a grief is a grief and you get over it. But two major griefs, back to back, long distances apart in different dimensions, spawning end portals using illegal items, the community began to suspect that this was more than just a back door and began crying foul. Little did we know how much worse it actually was. Okay, if they know all this is happening, what's House Bastard doing, bruh? They need to fix it. <laughs> While trying to seek information, Jack was talking to an old friend on the server, the Pompano. After talking for a while, Jack noticed that his behavior seemed a bit unusual. He told him, Let's continue this conversation on Steam. Once contacted via Steam, Pompano said he had no idea what Jack was talking about, that he hadn't been on 2B in a long time. This meant that someone had hacked into Pompano's account. With further research, it turned out that there had been a Chinese database leak with thousands of emails and passwords that had been passed around the dark net. Wow. Pompano's email was part of this leak. Wow! Being the same email and password for his Minecraft account. Someone was trying to socially engineer Jack with a hacked account, and suddenly, it all made sense. If someone had been able to hack Pompano, what if someone had been able to hack other accounts, including Housemaster himself? The nightmare became a reality when it was revealed that one of Housemaster's accounts, George Bush 420, was included in the database <laughs> leak and the George Bush 420 is his name. <laughs> using it. The account was seen building its spawn in creative mode and Excuse all me. hell broke loose. This 
was the proof. Years of suspicion, years of these players denying anything, calling us paranoid. This was the proof. Tyranny had direct access to operator status. Game over. They Welcome had to the two v two t dark age. They had, uh, yeah, they literally had creative mode on that account. Tyranny had been using the OP status to literally make themselves gods. The back door was so deep that Tristan even had player data files, meaning that even the contents of our ender chests were not secret anymore. Our bed locations, everything about our accounts, our join dates. Wow. It was all leaked. He had a lot. He came together in protest. How could House have let this happen? How could he have turned a blind eye to all of this? The outrage caused Housemaster to finally take action, but not publicly. He took back all access to admin, deleted all the super weapons and barrier blocks that had not been placed yet, and didn't say a word to anybody. Late April, what? 2016, the server is dead. The player base had quit since the so House just does this. Like he, I guess, kind of faced it. He just like deleted the stuff, but he doesn't say anything about it. Now I'm even more the confused. The server was no longer anarchy. After losing their power and becoming just like everyone else, Tristan, Talo, and the rest of Tyranny slowly began to stop playing. At this point, the 2v2t timeline actually splits. A large majority of the player base at this time migrates to Constantium.net and the, the server to be died. on an actual anarchy server. Some of the old 2B culture is actually still alive to this day on Constantium, and it's the best view of what life was like on 2B before the drama went down. Many players just quit 2B for good and in turn Minecraft and never came back. Huh. Those of us few that stayed, we were angry. The, the, amount of, the amount of time these people put in these anarchy servers is crazy, bro. To just quit it all. Everything we had done didn't matter. OP access meant that hundreds of bases had been compromised instantly without any of us ever knowing. Inside, I was disappointed and I was mad. I had just wasted three years of some of my spare time on a server where I was given the illusion of anarchy when in reality I could have been destroyed at any time instantly yeah May 2016 the server is in the worst shape it's ever been in that's what, okay yeah that's what he's meaning by this is that uh it wasn't an anarchy server for those three years because the tyranny group had complete control they had creative mode they were above everybody else so it wasn't anarchy. They were above, and all these other people are below. That's why everybody's mad. I get it out. Average of three to six players on during peak hours. With three to no six. donations coming in at all. Some of us, myself included, continued to play, but we were jaded. We didn't know what to do. The server was about to die. It was literally about to die. But then, out of nowhere, June 1st, 2016. The camping rusher? Rusher makes his video. The I camping mean, rusher, baby, bro. This is one of... This brings back so many memories, man. I used to watch this dude's Minecraft Factions videos every single day. Now he makes Fortnite videos. But this is crazy. He, he revived 2B2T. Is this what this man's about to say? Waves of his kitty fans. His kitty now, fans. Fueled by the rage of what had gone down, we began mercilessly killing them. <laughs> the night that myself and Sato came up with the idea for Team Veteran, we had a vision. This was the answer. YouTubers could save 2B2T. Rusher acknowledged Team Veteran and we began the conflict that would bring worldwide <laughs> fame. Rusher bought, brought players to the server, man. With 75 million views of 2B2T content all across YouTube in a single summer. Wow. Rusher saved 2B2T from death. I bet you never thought you'd hear me say that. Well, <laughs> Rusher was my enemy, and our groups were at war. Him and I, we worked together. 
and our conflict allowed us to remake they actually met in real life i did not i did not even know this 2v2t in our own image our vision instead of being a place for edgy nerds to hang out we turned it into a role play battlefield a server that would disgust tyranny and make them never want to return 2v2t was about to evolve war was the business that was going to keep 2v2t alive and save it not destroy it that being said brings me to the main point of this entire video 2v2t was never a true anarchy server housemaster gave his friends privileges that ended up being used against him against us and against the server house has never publicly admitted that this has happened he Ooh. has never publicly admitted that he got pwned and he's been covering it up for over two years he censors all discussion of this on the 2b2t subreddit <laughs> and most of the people that wanted this truth brought about have already quit <laughs> fitz calling out housemaster bro oh it was just it's true what i was just saying that 2b2t was not an anarchy server while those people had privileges but now he's calling him out for giving it to him and then even worse it being used against him bro oh <laughs> Uh, Pyrobite and Tristan, they both had backdoor access at one point in their 2v2t careers. They were equals. But Pyro never weaponized his backdoor. He never used it maliciously. He just used it to spawn illegal items, to travel to the world border, and he created the player heads that exist on the server even today. He never used it maliciously against another player, which is why he is considered the true king of 2v2t pyrobite <laughs> had the, the ultimate power and had the restraint to never use it okay Tristan i see that maliciously and it almost killed 2v2t in the process if russia hadn't have shown up this server would be dead it would not exist anymore wow <sighs> are you still with so it really became an actual anarchy after russia game because before that it wasn't Somebody was always sneakily had backdoor access. I'm sure you got a lot of questions. Like, Fit, why did you never mention or show the barrier blocks that were at Aureus? Yeah, if you had poked around the ruins of Aureus after my video, you might have found these barrier blocks. Why did you never tell us about these barrier blocks? Why did you keep the griefers of Space Bulk a secret in your original video? You never mentioned Tristan or Clyde or anyone in the Tyranny. Why did you wait almost two years to tell us this? Well, the reason why I've waited so long to make this video is because I didn't want the influx of new users and fans to know the truth, or else they would have been repulsed by 2B2T and quit right after the Russia war ended. It would have killed 2B2T's worldwide momentum, it would have killed my channel's momentum, and I would have never made it to the silver play button. And 2B2T would have fallen into financial ruin. This man's got like 3 mil now or 2 mil. Ruin with no conflict or advertisement. War is the business that keeps 2B2T alive. If you it's very true. If he put this out right after the Russia thing, a lot of those players probably wouldn't play. And I don't know how many Russia players technically play today. I mean, that's like five years ago at this point. But he put this out two years after the Russia thing happened. That's crazy. play on 2B2T. And you legitimately hate YouTubers like myself, or Rusher, or Ant Venom. You're a moron. <laughs> YouTubers saved this you're server. I watched this server almost die. YouTubers brought it back to life. So hey. next time you decide to, all you guys that dislike my you reaction videos, us. bro, we of saved this server for He's you. talking to you. I'm sorry. I just get a little heated because, of course, because 2B2T is very contrarian in nature. Everyone loves to hate on YouTubers. Well, guess what? We're the reason you're even still playing on that server. <laughs> so show some respect. He's not. He's not wrong. He's not Sorry. wrong. My rant he's is completely over. right. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering why we're trying to fight YouTubers and their fans constantly, see the real picture here. By killing them, we are actually embracing them and their change that they bring to the server. New players and new fan bases cause the server to masters on top of it these days. Like I said, I'm sorry it had to come to this house, but your censorship and the fact that you've never publicly admitted that this has happened 
made me want to delve into this topic and show the world what really went down. Wow. But that's it for today's block game drama. Wow. My man called out Housemaster so hard in this video, bro. I mean, that's something I never knew, but I didn't watch 2B2T three years ago. I've been watching it for about a year now. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like, drop a sub. It's Rabbit. I'm out. Peace.